All right, so now we've got our breadboard in front of us. I'm going to just do a very quick and basic explanation for how these things work uh, for those of you that don't know. So we've got these rows and columns. I guess it'd be columns and rows. And what happens is every node here in this row is connected. So they're underneath, in, this is number one, everything under here is connected. Okay, so then we go to number two. Again, everything in two is connected within number two. So again, you go row by row. So it, what's nice about it is you can plug components in, and if you want to, let's say you wanted to connect a resistor and a transistor. If you put that connection point both in row one, say it's 1B and 1C, there is a connection or a jumper underneath there. So you can easily slot things in and out uh, without having to do soldering, but also to give you a feel for things. We've got two sections here. So this first column here with five nodes, and then we've got a second column over here with five more. And then we've got two power rails here on the outside. The red is all connected vertically, so that's going to be like your 9-volt power supply, the positive side, and the blue is going to be your ground. So uh, kind of the these power rails are kind of opposite. You know, these, these uh, A, B, C, D columns and rows connect horizontally, whereas these connect vertically. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. One of the things that I would recommend is um, you're going to need to do a little soldering on this. I've just got a quarter-inch input jack here, and um, I've soldered two wires to it. I'm using solid core wires because I think they're much easier to work with. Um, but, yeah, so we've got, first of all, this, um, we've got a tip and a sleeve, this tip component here, you can see if you look at it from the inside, is this guy right here. And you can just see that it's connected, right? If you just look at where the metal is connected, it goes here. That's the point that you always want to ground. And so just to make that point a little more clearly, this is the opposite end. This is a cable. Now this cable actually has a tip and then a ring, which is separated by these two black spacers, and then the sleeve is down here. So um, when you plug it in, you can see this tip section makes contact with the tip, and then the sleeve is down here, making contact kind of with this base part. And you can see these these wire, these brown kind of spacers help to space that out. If there was a ring, it would be contacting here in the middle. That would be the stereo jack that I was referring to earlier. But I'm not going to do that right now, just to the prototyping stage. Um, I'm just going to proceed with this mono jack. Okay, so. I'm going to take my tip end, and I'm going to plug that here into the blue power rail to ground that out. And then I'm going to take the, the other end, and I'm going to plug it in. This is our input of our circuit. I'm going to just plug that into 1A. So now we've got input for the signal to come in. The signal can flow. It's The tip is grounded, and then the sleeve is connected to the input of our circuit. Okay, then first up, we have an input capacitor. Let's take a look and see what value they recommend. Now it seems to me that with this input capacitor, I'm drawing a little bit on my experience with fuzz phases, but I believe that you can, and actually looking at the schematic right now, if you scroll down, they actually do uh, some interesting stuff. They've got a, a basically a blend control on a potentiometer blending between a 0.001 UF capacitor and a 2.2 UF. My thought is the larger the value of the capacitor, the more low-end frequencies are going to be allowed to pass. So a 2.2 UF capacitor would be fairly large. That's going to basically allow the entire signal coming from your guitar to pass through. Whereas if you use a smaller value, like a 0.1 or a 0.01 or a 0.001, the smaller you get, you're going to be filtering away low-end frequencies that are not going to pass through. So... Um, just for the start of this circuit, I'm probably just going to go with like a 1 UF or a 2.2 UF. I've got a 2.2 right here capacitor. I'm just going to use that guy, and that's going to help us with our input section. So again, this is this is the capability we've got here to already start tone shaping is the value of this capacitor is pretty critical. Now, my capacitor is directional, meaning I've got a positive end and then an arrow pointing over to the negative end. 
I think I'm just going to put the positive end on the input. And then the negative end I'm just going to put down here to, you know, I'm putting it 1C on the positive end and then 5C on the negative end. Okay? So now we've come to the next point in the circuit where we've got the diode and the transistor. Okay, so I'm going to use this transistor right here. This is a silicon transistor. It's a BC109B. I think I picked this up who knows when. But um, there's, it's got this little tab here coming out the end. That tells me that where the collector is. And you may need to look it up. These transistors, you can put them in backwards. So you want to make sure you check out your specs. But I'm going to put it in so that the middle the middle tab or lead from this is connecting with um, that guy I just put in. Okay, so I've got here on number five, that's where this capacitor comes in, and this the base of my transistor. Okay, now I also need a diode. Okay, I've got a whole bag of diodes here. Um, I think the type of diode that you use makes a difference. This one is a N4001. I'm going to try this one just because this is a pretty generic diode that I think most anybody would have. Now with diodes, you all, again, you've got a positive end and a negative end. Now with this one, you've got one lead that's longer than the other. I, need a, I don't recall off the top of my head which one is the anode and the cathode, or the positive and the negative. Uh, but I think if you Google that, you can tell... With this one, you can see I've got a white line here on this end. So the white line tells me that, that it follows the, that's, that's the point that I need to put here on my connection. That's, so now, now on row five, I've got my, you know, the negative end of my diode, this input capacitor, and the middle rung, the base of my transistor. Now if I were smart, I would actually probably try and put it so that this other end wasn't just sitting over here, I would actually move it so that it goes over here to to row number four because that's where the other end of it needs to go per the schematic. So now my diode is spaced correctly. Uh, I'm going to go to the next. Now we're on the transistor. We've already done the base. Um, I'm going to do the emitter. I'm going to put a jumper here from this row number six. That's going to go to ground. So I'm just going to go out here my power bus, this blue part over here. Okay, that takes care of that. And then the top end, the collector of my transistor, I need to add a resistor. Now I have just a whole bunch of resistors. I bought a multi-pack on Amazon. So I grabbed one marked 10K. Okay, so now I've got my 10K resistor here that's going from um, the positive end of my power grid into the collector, the top lead of my transistor. And I, you know, this, this resistor here, this 10K, is very much, I think, open to interpretation as far as how you want to bias this thing and what kind of transistor you're using. So um, something to worth playing around with, I think. Okay, then this point also is a busy spot. Now we need another capacitor here. That's going to be our output capacitor. I think I'm a, a point one UF is probably cor correct. Now, one thing that I do have pulled up here on my other screen is a capacitor code book, and so I'm referring to that because uh, this capacitor I've got here, which I believe is point one, is marked 104K, and that marking of 104 tells me exactly what I need to know, and I just need to refer to that. Okay, so point one UF is 104. Capacitor code, so I believe I'm good to go there. So we're going to try, I think the Deluxe Base, base Baz Fuss uses that. So again, we're going from row number 4, and I'm just going to go down here to 15. We're getting a little, actually I'm going to get 13. It's getting a little crowded. I just want to make sure that there's enough space here, so I'm going to take a close look to make sure I've got enough space. Things aren't touching too badly. Okay, that looks good. There's our output cap. And then now we would have space to put a volume control. I have a 500K pot. It's calling for a 100K. 
you know, that's something I'm kind of curious about is, I know in guitar pedals, the value of, I'm sorry, guitars, I know that the value you use is pretty critical there. But in this application, I'm honestly not sure. Okay, so I'm just going to use this 500k pot simply because it's ready to go. Now, if you're looking at the pot like this, this is how I have memorized it just through guitars, right? When you have a guitar and a pick guard and you're wiring it, this is how you look at it. Um, with a potentiometer, I've got a video on my channel for, for potentiometers, how they work, so I'm not going to go into detail, but I look at this as input, middle is output, and the other side is ground. So we're going to start with ground. It's going to go over here to our ground bus. The input is going to tie in with that output capacitor that we just put in. So that's, I think, row 13. And then our output, I'm going to send that over here to blind space 20, row 20. And then we can use our, this guy right here, our output jack. Same thing between these two connection points. This guy here is connected to the sleeve, so that's, or to the tip, that's going to be our ground. So again, just putting that on our blue ground bus, and then this one is tying in right exactly where I left off. So, okay, so we should have a working Baz Fuss circuit here. Um, the only other thing I need to do is get a 9-volt power supply going on. So let's plug that guy in. I'm going to do black. We are negative ground, so we're going to do black on the ground and red as the positive, and you want to make sure you don't get that backwards. So, all right, I'm going to set this thing up and give it a little test run and see how it sounds as is.